56% of the Filipino people. So I created the Rainbow Coalition in the House of Representatives to support the Ramos economic, political, and social program. Yes, sir. And we were successful so that people began to say that we were no longer the sick man of Asia. We broke that. Absolutely. Ab de de demolished that image of the Philippines as the sick man of Asia. Until, of course, towards 1998, the uh, Asian crisis. financial crisis exploded upon us. And it was not the Philippine fault. It started with, uh, with uh, Thailand, spread to Indonesia and Malaysia, then jumped north to South Korea. But it also affected the Philippines. But not as much, sir. But because not of, as uh, badly because of the, the reforms programs, and yes. the structural programs that we put in place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Aside from the fact that in, from 1992 to 1998, as part of the win-win program, as part of the all-inclusive instead of exclusive uh, approaches to, to uh, problem solving, I negotiated with the Ram U yeah. and then mm. lifted them from the underground. Yeah. It was, and yes, then neg I negotiated also together with, with the, the peacemakers, the peace agreement with the MNLF, and I offered a coalition agreement with Normie Suwari, which he accepted. <laughs> so he became our candidate, candidate for governor. So from a rebel, he became a coalition partner. Even Mr. Unasan, who was uh, Unasan. against uh, the first Aquino administration, be, uh, eventually under... Um, Iran for senator. Yes, and won. And uh, <laughs> on top of that, President Rabos and I, Again, with the help of your father, we uh, create, created the amnesty program for everyone so that they could, adva uh, uh, they could return back to normalcy and re regain normal lives. Yes, sir. So yes. it was very successful. And uh, at the same time, because we, we normalcy had returned to the Philippines, we were able to pass... 230 economic and social reform laws. Some of these reform laws included the bills that I, I initiated. BOT? Yeah, the Build Operate Transfer yes. Program, Very where we are able to build <laughs> roads, bridges, uh, airports, seaports at no cost to the government. We raised $30 billion. $30 billion US dollars. I also authored the con basis conversion law of conversion of Clark, Subic. of Subic of Camp John Hay, of uh, Poro Point Poro in La Union, yes. and Fort Bonifacio. Fort Bonifacio, which is now a booming s satellite city, and the, the uh, resort world conversion in uh, Nichols Air Base. These are all very successful now. And together with the dollar remitters program that I conceived and implemented, which has become extremely successful. It brings in eight, ten billion dollars a year? No, to our 20 economy. billion 20 dollars billion a year. Dollar, and including as, unofficial channels. Yeah, yes, yeah. And has saved the Philippine economy from the 60 percent devaluation of 1971, saved the Philippine economy during the dark years of martial law, saved the Philippine economy during the uh, coup attempts during the Aquino period, Saved the Philippine economy during the uh, impeachment and coup years yes. in the Estrada and uh, Gloria Macapagal years. Yes. So it has been extremely successful. It's been copied by many other countries. And then many other bills and laws, including the Phil Felf Insurance Program, which is now available <laughs> by 60 million <laughs> Filipinos. I authored that because I said to myself, how come I'm here in Copenhagen, I'm here in uh, Sweden, I'm here in Norway, I'm here in Finland. All the, they have, uh, their, their citizens go to the hospitals for free. Why can't we have the same thing, even on a modest scale? So that's why, that's when I authored the, the health health program. And, and so few people who know that you are behind all this because in the Philippines, it's really the implementers of the law that get the credit. <laughs> but the people who write the law hardly are, are, are mentioned or are remembered. But, but in my case, I, I wrote the law and I implemented it because I was chairman of the Presidential <laughs> Committee of Dollar Remittances. So I said, we have to implement it. Yes, sir. Including now the law 
which declares a sacred and sacrosanct the dollar deposit law. <laughs> which is the main issue now <laughs> in the impeachment trial of the Chief So, but the key there is, if you follow the, the Swiss type deposit system, which is extremely successful, then you have to protect the in integrity of the dollar deposits, unless you can also introduce an exemption that unless with the permission of the depositor of course, of course. or for a case where you know an heinous crime has been committed and therefore uh, there has to be and the, the solution would lie in the opening of an account when perhaps those could be, be rare, rare exceptions. Occasions where you can actually open uh, a dollar account, yes, sir. Sir, you know, um, really your accomplishments with Mr. Ramos during the six years, I would like, I often call it, uh, personally, I, I call it the golden age of really Philippine government and Philippine Thank politics because we saw, it, we saw it, executive and legislative working together at its finest, really, yes. to produce everything, yes. to move the country forward. No vindictiveness, all in the spirit of reconciliation, and I said win-win. Get everyone on board the Philippine train to prosperity. Yes. And that was really the golden age. And, and the uh, peace agreement, the yes, successful sir. peace agreement. Yes, sir. Now, sir, um, let's go back, sir, because uh, clearly you are the right man for your position now. I mean, you've retired from politics and you're now heading, you've, you've gone overseas. I mean, the Philippines is much too small to contain uh, Jose de Venecia. <laughs> so you've actually gone overseas now and are, are leading such initiatives as the Asian Peace and Reconciliation Council. What kind of support, sir, are you getting from, from governments around the region? Obviously, you need the support from, from the governments and from the po political parties. Are they receptive to this? The Asian Peace and Reconciliation Council, when I proposed it in Thailand, yes, sir. Uh, before the peace of with the Foreign Policy Foundation of uh, Deputy Prime Minister Surakyat, it was approved immediately. And as I said, uh, by the by the dean of the Kennedy School of Government, law school, by, uh, by the International Conference of Asian Political Parties, by the Council of, of Democrats, and then <coughs> ap approved by the Cambodian government and endorsed by the Cambodian government, approved by the East Timor government, and then approved by the ASEAN Interparliamentary Assembly, which represents the ten parliaments of Southeast Asia. So, in 90 days, it has gained tremendous ground. And so, we might have a launching in uh, East Timor on April 25, 26, and then followed by a meeting in Bangkok. And then we will elect the officers and the members of the council. So, our next move would be how to raise funds to support of it. Of course, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which areas, um, we mentioned the first segment, a lot of areas, problem areas in the world, and uh, really there is, no, there is no end to this list, this very long list of conflict areas. Are you going to concentrate on certain areas in there, and if, if so, which, which ones will you prioritize? Well, one where we have started some work already is Nepal, mm, okay. because there is need to uh, bring the Maoists and the Marxists and the Congress Party into a government of national unity and to bring the Maoist guerrilla forces integrated into the uh, armed forces of uh, Nepal. In yes, the sir. same way that when we negotiated and completed the peace agreement with the MNLF, one of my last acts of speaker, which I did, again with the support of your father, we integrated 7,500 MNLF guerrillas into the armed forces of the Philippines. Successfully done. Of course, there are residual elements that have in turn joined the MILF. So that, that's another problem now which we have to face. And yes, then sir. we would need the problem of integration of the MNA, MILF forces if and when they decide to sign a peace agreement with us. So another problem is I was on the telephone with Taksin Sinawatra, former uh, Prime Minister Thailand, of Thailand. Yes. He is extremely popular. But the king of Thailand is also very, very popular, much admired, uh, revered, as a matter of fact, the king of Thailand. So we have to bring together the red shirts and the yellow shirts of Thailand as part 
of a win-win solution for Thailand. Are you optimistic, sir, about that? About the difficult about but achievable. <laughs> the problem in difficult Thailand. Difficult but achievable. And we saw what happened uh, yeah. recently. I mean, with the shutdown of Thailand virtually in yes, the airport. And, yes. Uh, yes. We, we never thought it could happen in Thailand, yes. but it did happen. And, yes. Uh, that's why I miss your father because <laughs> you know he should be. We 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 should be together because he oversaw the integration of forces in Cambodia. Yes. Successfully. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was more difficult because they killed two million people. Yes, sir. The yes, sir. massacre of two million people. But your father was there and uh, he, your father is a military diplomat. <laughs> so I would, <laughs> how I wish you were alive today that we could help us. Yes, sir. Because aside from peacemaking, the most important is the implementation. Of course. The demobilization of forces, the surrender of firearms. The power yes, sharing yes, uh, arrangement, yes, the paramilitary arrangements, and so on. So, at any rate, uh, these are part of the things that we have to work on. What about, say, the Spratleys? The Spratleys. Big issue. Spratleys, the problem with the Spratleys is that we are, we are the, the, uh, the Philippines, China, and Vietnam are the three frontline states. Let's make the South China Sea a zone of peace and cooperation. I'll give you that copy here. But you see, the, the, the Spratleys, the moment we keep talking about sovereignty, we'll never solve it. Yes. Because China says, I have sovereignty. Vietnam says, I have and sovereignty. And everyone doesn't want to budge. And yes. everyone doesn't want to budge. So my proposal, which is the proposal of Deng Xiaoping, shelved for the moment the issue of sovereignty, and then we agree on joint development, and joint and benefit, common development, yes. and joint benefits, yes. and joint production sharing. Look at the, the North Sea. The North Sea, after World War II, they partitioned the North Sea so that in the North Sea, oil was going to Teesside in England, oil was going to uh, Stavanger in Norway, and the gas was going north to Germany, to Bremen, Germany. Look at, uh, look at uh, the Caspian Sea. The Caspian Sea is like this. Here you have Kazakhstan drawing oil from uh, the Caspian Sea. You have Russia drawing oil from the Caspian Sea. You have Iran drawing <laughs> oil from the Caspian <laughs> Sea. You have, I think, uh, Turkmenistan uh, drawing oil from the Caspian Sea. Look at East Timor and... Um, and uh, Indonesia. Australia, yeah, and, and Australia. Australia yes. they are sharing the oil and gas from the waters between Darwin, Australia, North Australia, and, and East Timor. If they were fighting, both would not <laughs> benefit from are, that. And yes. Tens of thousands of people will be killed, but now both are benefiting from the oil and gas. Right now, buddy. The oil tankers from Tokyo Bay, from Incheon, South Korea, from Taiwan, the tankers from South China and East China, and the tankers from Manila Bay, all of us have to pass through this practice, go into the Straits of Malacca, go into the Andaman Sea, <laughs> go into the Indian Ocean, go into the Arabian Sea, Enter the Straits of Hormuz and then pick our lift our oil from Rastanura, from bring Qatar, it, bring it back. Oman, and yes. then bring it back. <laughs> when right here, we right here in this prat list, we have oil in our own front yard and in our own backyard. So why not share it? Just share, share it. it. Everyone wins. Everyone, everyone benefits. Everyone wins. Yes, sir. Yes. This is the formula that I am referring to. Here. And there's no war. Yes. No war. I wish everyone saw it with as much clarity, uh, sir, as you did. Uh, uh, there would be no, there would be peace, uh, finally. Yes. You know? yeah, and, peace and, 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 uh, and there is now the threat that the Straits of Hormuz could be uh, clogged and closed yes. because, because of the problems, problems with Iran. With Iran. Yes. So you see, these are what we need: are simple, common sense <laughs> solutions. It doesn't need a PhD. Every, you don't you need know, a PhD. Everybody is talking simple. about but so, in, in, okay. <laughs> You know, sir, sometimes they say that the best solutions are right in front of you. Right. It, it just needs someone to open your eyes and see them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sir, uh, before we go, would you like to say something to our viewers? 
Well, um, as I was saying that uh, I, I, uh, I am devoting my life, I'm now 75, to see how I can contribute to uh, peace and reconciliation and development in Asia and, and see how we can achieve political and economic integration in Asia. One of the things that I've always questioned that Asia, home of the great civilizations, great cultures, up to now we don't have an Asian parliament. Up to now, whereas Europe has its parliament, Africa has its regional parliament, Latin America has its parliament. We, we don't have. And then also, we need to enlarge the uh, extent of this partnership among the parties in Asia. Now we have been able to work out an alliance with the political parties of Latin America and the Caribbean. And now I'm working on uh, possible interaction with the political parties of Africa for a tri-continental alliance. And then we will reach out to the political parties of North America and Europe for a global union. At the end of the day, you know, we, we, we are all God's children. We, there should be no class of civilizations, no class of religions. And uh, we should be able to work together in peace, in reconciliation, and in development. And this we need as well in the Philippines. This campaign by President Aquino for, uh, in this tremendous battle against corruption and poverty. This is a genuine campaign and it's appreciated. But at a certain point, once this has been launched and sustained, I think he should now move to, to unite the nation. Unite the nation, that is the reason why we created this Asian Peace and Reconciliation Council because this is what the world needs. And I know that in his heart, this is what God wants for the Philippines, for Asia, and for his children. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very well said. Well, Mr. Speaker, Speaker Emeritus. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much, sir. More <laughs> power you, to you, sir. Speaker Emeritus. And, sir, we look forward to the next 75. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. So we, guys, will, we will see you in Georgia. Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll, we'll solve the problem between Russia and Georgia. And that, that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed uh, getting to know more about uh, Speaker Emeritus Jose de Venecia. I'll see you next week. This is Buddy Khan here at Philippines Uncut, the show where we talk about what matters to you because you matter the most. See you next week. to uh, problem solving, I negotiated with the Ram Yu yeah. and then mm. lifted them from the underground. Yeah. It was, and yes, then neg I negotiated also together with, with the, the peacemakers, the peace agreement with the MNLF and I offered a coalition agreement with Nord Miswari which he accepted. <laughs> so he became our country, 6% of the Filipino people. So I created the Rainbow Coalition in the House of Representatives to support the Ramos economic, political, and social program. Yes, sir. And we were successful so that people began to say that we were no longer the sick man of Asia. We broke that. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, demolished that image of the, the Philippines. But not as much, sir. But because not of, as uh, badly because of the, the reforms programs. and yes. the structural programs that we put in place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Aside from the fact that in, from 1992 to 1998, as part of the win-win program, as part of the all-inclusive instead of exclusive uh, approaches to the candidate for <laughs> governor, so from a rebel, he became a coalition partner. Even Mr. Onasan, who was uh, Onasan. against uh, the first Aquino administration, eventually under um, he ran for senator yes, and won. And uh, <laughs> on top of that. President Ramos and I 
again with the help of your father. We uh, cre created the Amnesty Philippines as the sick man of Asia. Until, of course, towards 1998, the uh, Asian crisis. financial crisis exploded upon us. And it was not a Philippine fault. It started with, uh, with uh, Thailand, spread to Indonesia and Malaysia, then jumped north to South Korea. But it also affected...